Hello, Marcel Kadiev here to give you a quick run through of Lucid Physics plugin for 3ds Max. If you haven't downloaded and installed it from our website, please visit the link in the description for more information on how to do that. First thing you will notice in 3ds Max is the Lucid toolbar at the top. It's a convenient way to quickly set up and work with Lucid, however, all of its functionality is also available through other places in 3ds Max. It has four buttons and over the course of this video we will go through the buttons and learn what they do. Let's jump right in and simulate a ball falling onto a plane. So I will create a plane inside the perspective viewport and that will also add a sphere into the scene which is going to be slightly above my plane. First thing I will do is mark this sphere as a lucid simulation object by using the Add Selected Objects to Simulation button. By default it has a little wooden icon here, which means that it's going to use the wood preset and make the ball a rigid object. So I if I click this button, it will add a lucid modifier to my sphere object and it will use the wood preset which kind of sets all of the parameters up and we don't have to worry about this for now. Next we have to add the plane to the simulation. To do this I will click on the plane and this time I will click and hold the add object to simulation button and I will select the static preset button. This will also add a lucid modifier to the plane and it will set the body type to collision which makes it static and not moving. To start the simulation I will click a little sandbox button here. It's a toggle button so whenever it's on the simulation is happening and whenever it's off the simulation has stopped. Once I click it on all I need to do is press the play animation button in 3ds Max and my simulation begins. Alternatively I can scroll the simulation manually and it will continue the same way as if I press the play button. So we have our ball rolling here and to reset the simulation all I need to do is click this button again and my ball is back in the position. While using the sandbox mode is fun, it's not very productive. So our next step is to record our simulation. To do this, I will press the record physics button here and when I do that, it will go through the current scene animation range and it will perform the simulation the same way as it would in sandbox mode, but this time the results have been recorded. The results are recorded inside the Lucid modifier and they will be saved and loaded with the scene. If you want to remove the simulation from the scene, all you have to do is delete the Lucid modifier. At this point, you may want to cache out the vertex positions or you can save the animation in any other pipeline friendly way that you choose. The recorded data will be deleted next time you enter the sandbox mode or if you re-record the animation. And this applies to all of the objects inside the Lucid simulation. There are a few things that we can control when creating a rigid body simulation. For example, we can remove any kind of movement of the ball along the plane by adding a little bit of friction. And this can be done by adding global flex settings object. To do this, use the rightmost button uh, to create a hidden lucid flex settings node inside 3ds Max. This node contains parameters which can alter the simulation results. So to fix the node sliding all I need to do is slightly increase the static friction parameter here and once I do that I just need to go into sandbox mode and see what happens and as you see now the ball is standing still because of the static friction between itself and the plane. As a next step let's quickly create a fluid simulation. I'm going to simulate a wine glass type of scenario where we have a larger spherical object that contains a smaller spherical fluid object. So to do this I'm going to create a sphere and quickly remove the top part of it just like so. And I'm also going to flip its normals so that its surface is facing inside and therefore it can trap our fluid object. So to do this I'll add the normal modifier and then I will create a sphere that's inside of this bigger container. Just to make it more visible let me change the color of the outside sphere and 
the inside sphere is actually a perfect color to represent something water-like. So just like before, I'm going to use the static collision preset to mark the outside sphere as static and not moving. And the inside sphere, I'm going to use the water preset. There are actually three fluid presets. One is water, another one is glue, and then we have a mud preset. But the only difference between these is the settings that control the viscosity of it. So I'll just set water for now. Uh, so all I need to do now is enter the sandbox mode and press simulate and we can see that we have some kind of water movement but it's very chaotic. To make it more predictable I need to change my global settings to increase the number of sub steps and iterations which it automatically sets for us. So I'll just restart the simulation and now the water object will act a lot more predictably. Just to make it a little bit more visible, I'm going to hide the outside sphere. Just like before, we can record our simulation by pressing the record button and letting it run through the whole active timeline. Once it's done, you can scroll through and play it at very fast speeds. And the particle display in Lucid is very quick, so we can have many more particles participating in our simulation at the same time. One thing you will notice about the water fluid simulation is that we are displaying particles as opposed to mesh. However, this is done mainly for speed purposes. And to display an actual mesh, unclick the show us particles option and we have our fluid mesh. The resolution of the fluid mesh can be controlled using the granularity value. The smaller the value, the more detailed particle mesh you're going to have, but it's also going to take a little bit longer time to generate it. So at this particle count it's fine, but if we decrease it to some lower value you might get slightly lower frame rates once it's generating particles. And in many cases we don't really want individual particles to be seen like this, so a value of one or two in a standard viewport is perfectly acceptable. Lucid modifiers inside 3ds Max can be instanced, so if I go and create another sphere or any other object and then I copy my Lucid modifier and instance it onto another sphere by using the paste instance option. It's going to inherit all of the same properties and simulation parameters as the other sphere. And now if I simulate it, both spheres are going to be represented and they're going to be part of the same simulation. So if I show my particles, it's going to be much quicker. You can see that the fluids generated by both spheres are now mixing because they are inside the same volume. To create animated collision objects, all we need to do is select our objects and use the animated collision object button, which is the lowest one in the add to simulation dropdown. And this one is going to set to static object to be able to use them as animated objects. The only catch is that these objects have to be convex or they will be converted to convex meshes for you. And this is our limitation for this version of Lucid. So uh, I took the liberty to animate this object a little bit over time. And I set my timeline to be a thousand frames long just so we can kind of see what's going on here. Our teapot is going to be a fluid object. So I set the preset there. And one other thing I'm going to do is not show this teapot as particles and also use the global settings to increase the resolution a little bit, a little bit so that we have more particles generated for this teapot. In the first beta release of Lucid, this resolution is limited to about value of 40 maximum, but we intend to increase this limit in the future versions. So let's click the button and see what happens. You can see that our collision object is now moving and affecting the fluid simulation. Other types of simulated objects include inflatable objects, which is good for things like balls and uh, water balloons. So I'm going to assign the inflatable object to the stores. We also have a cloth object, which is obviously good for cloth. 
and we have a rubber object which is something between inflatable and rigid body uh, to demonstrate I'm just going to quickly set up the scene as we did before and then I'm going to use the sandbox mode to simulate the scene something weird is happening here because the cloth is going straight through our inflatable object and to debug this we can actually display the particles for each object. To, sh to do this we need to select the object and use the show as particles button and the particles at this point are very tiny so they're hard to see but if we use the global settings we can increase the particle radius to some larger value so we can set it to something like 3 and this will be 3 max scene units so this should be visible at this scale we can do the same thing with all of the objects that are currently in the simulation and simulate the scene again so now you can see why this is happening and that is because uh, the particles are the things that are colliding amongst each other and there are just not enough particles going between our cloth object and between our torus object so to fix this problem what I can do is go to my box object and just increase the number of segments used inside the box to kind of make the number of particles in it larger so I can set it to something like 10 and just make this mesh a lot denser. Another thing I can do is increase the actual particles radius so instead of 3 I can set something like 6 and now if we simulate our scene it's still not happening so we might need a slightly larger particle size and we can increase this even further to something like 10 and try it again. So our cloth is actually affecting the inflatable object it just happens to be heavier so it is actually bending it down forward a little bit you can control the pressure of inflatable objects by changing the pressure parameter inside the lucid modifier and doing so will affect the simulation by making them more stiff or more loose if you find lucid fun to play with or useful or if you want to join a beta please uh, leave us a message or contact us directly by following the links down in the description area. Thank you very much.